in the previous video, we attempted to solve the mixing problem where you have, or a mixing problem, with some initial conditions here. So you have a pool, there's some salt dissolved in it, and at every time there are two ways that salt either leaves or, leaves or comes into the pool. There's a leak, which is leaking salt, and you're assuming it's dissolving perfectly evenly, hence the mixing at every time step. So you're leaking out a proportional amount of salt to how much is actually in your pool. And at all times you're also have you got a hose that's bringing in new water with a variable amount of salt. It is ranging with time. So what we did is we wrote out a differential equation here. The change of salt has the first term here, that is how much salt is coming in by the hose. The second term is how much salt is leaving. And we rearranged it until we got it to this form where we realized it was a linear first order differential equation and we realized hey this looks kind of almost like a product of two functions that we're taking the derivative of we thought wouldn't it be great if we could get it into this form <laughs> and indeed there's a magic function here mu of x that if we multiply it into both sides then you do get it into a product rule and that's what we did last video so in this we, we concluded last video with this. The derivative of the product of two functions equals this. So this is a really neat and concise form for our, our differential equation. And in this video, we're going to solve for q of t, the salt in the pool at any time t. So let's get on with it. The way we're going to solve this, two steps, we're going to take the integral of both sides. Then we're just going to divide by 400 plus 5t. So let's do this. If we take the integral of this side, it's fairly simple. The integral goes away with the derivative, and we're just left with 400 plus 5t times q of t. So that gives us, uh, let me just switch to yellow maybe, 400 plus 5t times q of t. So that's what we're left with on this side after you take the integral. On this side, and uh, just to be safe, we can add a constant here because there's going to be a lot more integration happening over here. So we're going to add our constant of integration over here instead of on this side. So on this side, what are we going to get? Well, I'm going to take the 10 out, which leaves us with the integral of 400 plus 5t times the cosine of t plus 1 dt. How are we going to integrate this? This does look a little bit daunting. We have a multiplication of two functions, and it doesn't look like u substitution where we could use the reverse chain rule, because there is no real derivative of a function uh, in the integral here. But it does look like we might be able to solve it with uh, u and v substitution, as if it's a reverse product rule because we have here this first function, 400 plus 5t. That looks like if we took the derivative of it, it could become pretty simple, just 5. So what we might be able to do is we could say, let's think, maybe we could say, uh, so when you have this form, you assume that it's taking the form, uh, this is u and then dv, and you say that this is equal to uh, that, that this integral of u dv equals u times v, so the integral of this dv, minus the integral of v du. So the whole point is if you can make du as simple as possible, maybe you'll get lucky and the second integral will be just of a simple function like perhaps cosine of t or sine of t, uh, d, uh, maybe like uh, 5 dt or something, and it would be nice and simple. So uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to pick a u where the derivative is simple. So derivative of 400 plus 5t, that's pretty simple. That's just a constant. So u equals 400 plus 5t, which tells us that du equals 5 dt. All right, that's great. Now v. So we're going to let v. We don't actually know what v is yet. And we have to remember that, be very careful when we're doing these types of things, because what we know from this first integral, remember, this is the integral we have here, 
these are the same thing. So, if we're trying to solve for v, we have to remember, we only know dv. We know that dv is the cosine of t plus 1 dt. So we know that dv is the cosine of t plus 1 dt. So if we're trying to solve for v, then we need to take the integral of this dv. Well, the integral of these, this term by term, integral of cosine of t is the sine of t, and we can add integral of 1 is t, and no need for the dt anymore, it goes away with the integration. So, now we actually do have u, v, du, and dv. So, let's rewrite it into this form. So, the integral of u dv, which is 400 plus 5t times dv, cosine of t plus 1 dt, integral of u dv, well, it's fairly simple. First, we just have the multiplication of the two functions. So, u, which is, again, 400 plus 5t times v is the sine of t plus t. This minus, and now we have the integral that hopefully with this substitution is going to become fairly easy. So now we have v du. v is the sine of t plus t. du is 5 dt. So I'm going to take the 5 out here and just say dt. And indeed, this is simpler because we went from a product of two functions to an addition of two functions, and that isn't too hard. So let's write this out. Then we get, so 400 plus 5t. I'm going to keep it in uh, the concise form just for now, in the factored form. We'll be expanding it out uh, later. Well, if we feel like it. We don't actually have to expand it out. And so then we have minus 5 times, and we know here that we have the integral of sine of t, this is negative cosine of t, plus t, this goes to plus t squared over 2, and we could add a constant of integration here to this integral, but we have to remember that we have a constant of integration up here anyway, so it wouldn't really change anything, because at the end of the day you would add them together to get a new constant of integration, and everything would just be a new constant, same thing. So, let's we write this into our final form, which is 400 plus 5t times the sine of t plus t plus 5 times the cosine of t minus 5t squared over 2. Now that we have this, we can plug it back in, and we will have solved for t. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So, uh, whoops, I guess we don't have much more room this way, so let's scroll to the right a bit. All right, so I'm just going to copy the important parts here, and we're going to leave the rest as we scroll up and to the right. So let's scroll here and scroll, and aha new space. Magic. Okay. So, now that we have this, all that's left for us to do is copy this in. So, looks like I didn't get all of this. This is integral here. Anyway, so, we copy this in, and what we find is 400 plus 5t times q of t. This equals, and I'm going to subtract the constant of integration, so this equals negative c, which is, again, just a new constant, so c. This equals c, and then plus 10 times all of this. So plus 10 times 400 plus 5t times the sine of t plus t plus 10 times 5, so plus 50 times the cosine of t, and then plus, well, uh, multiplying this by 10, the 2 is going to absorb up that factor of 2, so we're just actually going to have minus 25t squared here. And we're tantalizingly close to having solved this differential equation. Now, all we have to do is divide by 400 plus 5t, 
and we'll have solved our differential equation in its general form, and then we can quickly go back and substitute in our initial condition to find the specific form of it, given what we know. So, let's give a lot of space here. Q of t equals some constant plus 10 times 400 plus 5t times the sine of t plus t plus 50 times the cosine of t minus 25 times t squared. All of this divided by the function that we just divided by here, which is 400 plus 5t. And with this, we've solved the general form of the uh, this pool mixing problem. And if we're going to go back to this and use some initial conditions, let's remember what the initial problem was all about up here. We had that we started with 10 pounds of salt. Well, that's key information because we just had our, we just figured out what our function for salt is. So if we say Q of zero equals 20, we'll be able to solve for what C is, that constant of integration. So if we go back here, as we remember, we just had 20 pounds of salt at time t equals zero. We can write that as Q of zero, this equals 20. But another thing that Q of 0 equals is C plus 10 times 400 plus 0 is 400. But here, sine of 0 is 0 and 0. So this is all getting multiplied by 0. So we're actually going to cancel it out. Plus 50 times the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is just 1. So this is plus 50. And then here we again have minus 0. And as we divide here, we'll be dividing by 400 plus 0 is 400. So here, we can write this as Q of 0 equals 20 equals. So here we have C divided by 400 plus 50 divided by 400. Well, 50 divided by 400 is the same as 1 eighth, right? doing the math right there. And I suppose it's actually uh, you know, not much merit to separating out the fraction at this stage when we can just uh, multiply everything up anyway. So this is just c plus 50 all divided by 400. Because then all we need to do is multiply both sides by 400 here. And you get that 20 times 400. Well, let's see, what is that? That's uh, 4,000 times 2, so 8,000. 8,000 equals c plus 50. So this tells us that C equals 8,000 minus 50, 7,950. So big moment of accomplishment. Let's write out our final answer that the amount of salt in the pool at any time t, Q of t, is going to equal 7,950 plus 10 times 400 plus 5t times the sine of t plus t plus 50 times the cosine of t minus 25 times t squared all divided by 400 plus 5t and very quickly here, I think I'm going to pause the video and restart it. I'm just going to plug this into a graphing calculator so you can see what this function looks like. It's actually pretty interesting. Well, on second thought, I'm going to, this video is running a bit long, so I'm just going to uh, make this into a short part three uh, and show you what this looks like when graphed.